So I am going to test my secret weapon. That ought to keep a leopard or two away from me tonight. The image of Africa is one of majesty and danger, beauty and challenge, home to an incredible variety of wildlife and an impressive variance of landscapes. Africa maintains a nearly mystical reputation. For this survival odyssey, I'm headed into classic Africa, the kind I've seen in movies and documentaries for years. I'm headed into the north edge of South Africa. Thousands of hectares of scrub brush and forests, cliffs and plains. In the extreme pre-dawn, well before any major breezes have had the chance to blow up, I'm able to launch into the picturesque scene they call Africa by one of the most beautiful ways to see the world. Here we go! Hot air balloon. This is Africa. Big skies, open plains, and jungles. And down there, there are wildebeest and antelope surviving in the same land as the predators, the lion and the cheetahs, and the hyenas. And by hot air balloon has to be one of the most spectacularly beautiful ways to see this continent. You can just drift and glide silently over top of the game. You can get close down and see everything. It's absolutely stunning. But what if you were down there and you had to survive alone for seven days? Well, I'm gonna find out. That's it then, the crew's taking off and they'll leave me here absolutely alone for the next seven days in the middle of a remote stretch of Africa. I've landed in an area just on the edge of some plains. There's a bit of forest all around me and not much else. There's no question that this balloon basket will come in handy for survival. I'm barely here half an hour. Some wicked lightning and here comes the rain. It's coming right at me and it's gonna be a strong downpour. I can see if I can pull the parachute here, but it weighs a lot. I don't think I can pull the whole thing. I figured I'd have time to cut it up and maybe use it. I tried to plan this challenge around landing the balloon and setting up for the night, but weather can change quickly and foil some of the best laid plans. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, here it comes. I'm out of time. Gotta watch where you're running, too. Oh, pouring down. Okay. Part of the hot air balloon is actually a, a bit of it, it's wool, and I wanted to make sure that I kept it dry so I can use it as a blanket tonight. It's going to be a long seven days. Cover you up. Well, I can't wait forever. It just keeps on raining here, and um, that big hot air balloon is one big tarp that I can use. So I think I'm just going to go out in the rain as it is, get it here, and then get underneath it. Otherwise, I'm just sitting under some branches here, getting dripped on the whole time. Might be in between thunder clouds here. I'm gonna do this sort of without rhyme or reason. I'm just gonna cut something off I can use just to get me through the night. Yeah, I hear you. Right, just give me 
15, 20 minutes here. Ah, come on, yeah. 15 minutes, not three. Okay. Oh, that's the wool. Come on with me. The lower section of the balloon itself is made of wool, which will be really handy. But all my movement out in the open like this can attract dangerous predators. Now it can rain. Huh. The coolest thing. The bottom of this um, basket has a big foam sponge, so that's going to give me a nice cushion to lie on. And that'll help. The propane canisters are just in the way for now, but they'll come in handy once the night falls. Padding. That's good. That'll make it a little easier for sleeping. It's not going to stop a lion, but uh, I've got a few tricks up my sleeve yet for protection. At least I'll be drying here tonight anyway. The advantage of having the ripstop nylon balloon material and the basket for a survival situation is huge. Not having to build a rainproof shelter out of the bush saves me an incredible amount of time and energy. Time to test my line of defense. If something comes at me from the front, here's what I can do. Oh yeah, baby. That'll do. With the sun dropping down, I'll let you know my challenge this time. It's first to survive here in the plains of Africa, then make my way through very dangerous lion territory. Go up to the top of that plateau in behind me, where my crew will rendezvous with me seven days from now. It's like being in a little wicker home right now. Probably the most comfortable I've ever been surviving. The moon is intense tonight. I'm going to stay inside here with my fireball flinging jets at the front door. All night long, the thunder in the distance rumbled, so I'm hoping that I can get away without having another downpour to deal with. Here we go. Day two in Africa. It's a long uphill climb to the plateau, so obviously I can't carry the basket with me, but there's a lot inside of it that I can use. What's left of a small bottle of water, my multi-tool. In this area, they call it a panga machete. I also got myself an air horn. That will hopefully at least freak out the odd lion if he wants to come in close. And lastly, I figure if I'm gonna have to get into real up close hand-to-hand -hand combat with a 750 pound lion, I might as well have some kind of advantage. So I asked for and picked up a big old belt knife. Now that's a knife. Well, crash landing in a hot air balloon at least leaves you with a number of supplies that come with the balloon. The basket itself has given me a fantastic shelter and it is full of a treasure trove of supplies that I can use. Just a whole whack of cables and rope and wires and webbing. It's going to be just fantastic. This hot air balloon came with its own first aid kit and there wasn't much in it. Just a few band-aids and some medication. Believe it or not, Simply combining some basic medications will give me an edge on survival. <laughs> it's day two stranded in the African plains. The weather has cleared, so it's time to head back out and see what else I can cannibalize from the balloon. Not really certain what it is I'm doing here. Maybe this will work.
Just a ton of rope came out of this balloon. This is good. This is really good. Plan is to make myself a hammock. It may seem like such a small thing, but having the knowledge of various rope knots can greatly improve my chances of survival when coping with a situation like this. I now have a hammock. Before I go anywhere, one thing I could and should do while I'm here immediately is set myself up with a sort of a protective pole walking stick. And uh, I can even uh, maybe lash on my knife and turn this into a real protective spear. So the point here is I want to extend my reach with this knife. See that? Formidable spear. When stuck in one place, it'll give me a great advantage to know what's around me. That's where doing a proper patrol comes in. It's all about distance and time. Making a patrol map is not complicated. All you need is a watch, a pen, and paper. Every time you come upon a distinct landmark, you make a note of that landmark, and how much time has passed since the previous one. If it's an actual trail that you see, make a note of its direction, north and south or east and west. This technique originates with the military, but it's very effective in any survival situation. Whew, this is what I like to see. It's not super clean, but it's moving. There's sand and there's life. So the water's probably fine. Probably one of the best things I can do in this kind of heat is uh, get a cool bandana on me. But one of the best place to put it, really, is not up around your head and your face, but actually, if you can, wrap it around your neck so that your carotid arteries take the coolness. Cattail. Grows all over the world. Mmm. Excellent. Think about the cattail. You can eat a different part of it almost every season of the year. Mm. This, is, uh, this is unfortunate. I was hoping this might be a termite nest that I could chow down on and get in there and get some termites to eat for lunch, but it seems to be riddled with snake holes. Old termite holes are a favorite haunt of the formidable black mamba snake plenty of room for it to wind up its up to 14 foot length of body and if this is its home it'll shoot out with great aggression to defend its territory a man once woke up to realize that a mamba had slipped into his sleeping bag by the time his friends had grabbed his shoulders and pulled him out which took only about three seconds the mamba had bitten him 13 times he didn't make it okay the results of my patrol map were great because of this map now, I can find my way to and from the small river, the creek, with the flowing water whenever I need to uh, fill up and get a drink and get rehydrated. This way, I can find my way there and back even when I'm not feeling really good, if I'm disoriented. And if I, wanted to, if I was with somebody, I can say, here, here's the location to the water. They can take it, head out to the water, and find their way back. Patrol maps, they're, uh, they're worth their weight, that's for sure. As the skies darken, the sounds of Africa are keeping my senses on high alert. Okay, I am listening to something very large. Growl and moan and groan, not too far from here. I, I would say at the most a quarter of a kilometer, about, you know, about a two-tenths of a mile sort of thing. I have no way of knowing whether it's a wildebeest, a buffalo, a leopard, or a lion. So I am going to test my secret weapon. There we go. 
probably keep a leopard or two away from me tonight. Morning of day three. Thought I was gonna storm up. I batten down the hatches. It never did rain though. It thundered a lot. I'm gonna get on the move today. I have three days left before I have to rendezvous with the crew. And that means I have to get moving today, heading towards the plateau, through lion territory. If I could, I would take all of the advantages of the hot air balloon with me, but there's only so much I can carry on my back. It's not so easy to leave a place of security. see a spot I can use. All day I've been hiking in the brutally hot sun and that's enough. So we got this tree and that tree over there I'm gonna use for my hammock. There we go. Now this is survival. I'm gonna fashion the corners of this big square tarp so that I can tie to them. Put it inside like this, loop it around like that, like that, and like that. I'll do a clove hitch. Clove hitch that works really well when you're doing this. Tie off for good measure. You see? Here it comes, turning right back on me. Whoa, shoot. Okay, this is not gonna be fun now. Fortunately for me, the heavy winds were just a false alarm. There'll be no storm this day. I'm not far, maybe about 100 yards from where I've set up the hammock. And a uh, nice uh, dry riverbed here I can pull some water from. So. This is uh, definitely a good spot to get some water. Not necessarily this muddy water. I suppose if I really had to, I could drink it, but uh, I'm, my assumption is that the ground is saturated with uh, probably animal feces and urine. Ooh, what the heck is that? Ooh, there's some big holes in the side there, and I better be careful because there could easily be snakes in those holes. So I want to be able to get fresh water out of this. As you can see, it's pretty much just mud. What I'm going to do is dig myself a hole. Scoop out. It's already starting to fill in with water. It's really as simple as that. While I let the water seep in, I want to satisfy my curiosity about some of the holes in the mud wall. Big mistake. Well, that gave me a fright. Maybe a stupid move on my part, eh? Some deep holes in this cliffside, and uh, in my situation, probably not smart to uh, try poking in them. I think I just woke up a hornet's nest in the other hole. Oh boy. Nice juicy ant. The ant bums. Hmm. 
are quite tasty. With protein. You can munch on the little ant bums, the docile ants. Don't go after the aggressive ants. But the little docile ants, the big ones with the big bums, it's protein. This might just seem a little bit casual, but in truth, conserving energy at the right time is vital to survival. You can't just be up all the time building things, running around, trying to catch game, trying to find water. The old saying is, if you don't have to stand up, sit down. If you don't have to sit down, lie down. And besides, I'm not actually sleeping through the nights anyway, so. Stomach's growling and something's growling out there. Let's go see how my water's making out. If I had to, I could just simply drink this as it is. But what I can do is, of course, use my bandana. And, uh, Get some water that way. Working. Oh, that ought to clean the system out. I haven't had a fire in nearly three days. And believe it or not, the medication in my first aid kit can help remedy that. Rhino dung, potassium permanganate, an antiseptic, glycerin for diarrhea. Watch what happens when you put them both together. Oh yeah. That's what happens when you put the two of them together. Now that I no longer have my big jet flamethrowers to protect me, this fire will go a long way towards keeping any curious leopards in the area at bay. No shortage of dry material around here, let me tell you. Now I can boil some water up using the plastic bottle. <laughs> All right, I've been drinking that uh, chocolate milk muddy water so far, but I'm gonna show you that you can boil water in a plastic bottle if you really had to, if you really needed to purify your water. As long as the flames only lick the bottle where it's filled with water, I should be okay. Good red hot coals would work even better. The danger is obviously that I might burn right through leaving me without a water carrying container or even putting my fire out. That's pretty cool. Getting water to boil in plastic. It's deformed it, but it works. And that helps to uh, purify any bad water you might be able to collect, even if all you have is a plastic bottle. There's something big out there. Hoping it's just a wildebeest. If it's a buffalo, I'm in serious trouble. Okay, now there's two of them. What do you think? Maybe they're not music lovers. This is us. 
just left. Got the hammock, and I used the uh, the wool blanket that I took off of the hot air balloon. Because believe it or not, I got a bit cool. <sighs> I took the bottom part of my pant legs off, and then I got too cool <laughs> at night. Go figure. I should be moving on today. We'll see. We'll see how the rain holds out. This is a fantastic byproduct of getting rained on. Fresh, clean water. Oh, I'm gonna guzzle up as much of this as I can. Benefits of rain. Mm. Mm. All right, well, I don't know whether it's because I'm refreshed from all this fantastic rainwater, mm. or if it's just because it is a little brighter, but I've got to make my way, and uh, I think I'll take the chance. The tear down. For the first time ever, I've decided during one of these survival odysseys that I'm going to uh, leave behind a camera case. It's just too much stuff to carry in this heat. So I'm going to just pick the most important stuff, leave behind my telephoto lens, my uh, third big camera, and uh, just go with the bare essentials so I don't have to carry too much. <sighs> nice not to be traveling in the heat of the sun. The plateau is an easy target to head for. It's a clear landmark in the distance, beyond the lower plains. Look at this little bugger. This guy is going right for a sensitive spot. Uh, there have been ticks on me since I started this thing. Big ones, small ones, fast ones, slow ones. Ones with striped legs, ones all red. Fortunately, not too many of them are carrying a lot of diseases. My nerves are now on high alert. I'm out of the plains and into the forested area where the predators have more hiding places. I knew from scouting this area in advance that this particular location had a pride of lions in it led by a huge 750-pound male. And the guides in the area told me they are a particularly aggressive pride when it comes to humans. This tree here is where I'm gonna make my shelter. Now I've chosen it because it's a strong enough tree for me to climb on if I had to get up out of the way of a lion. And it looks like I should be able to climb it quickly. There's an obvious huge advantage having the balloon material as a tarp in lion territory. Still though, it always amazes me that you can feel almost protected from lions, or even bears for that matter, with just a thin piece of nylon. It really just is a false sense of security, but I'll take it for now. Really, by all standards, it's a bit of a paradise compared to what I'm usually used to. Now, I'm still very exposed here, very wide open to lions if, if were they to come in, so there's something else I can do here that most people do to protect your shelter from lions. And let's find some good solid thorn trees and circle the whole perimeter with thorn trees. This is the first time I've ever made a door out of a thorn bush, let me tell you. So the idea, as I climb inside, Pull this last thorn tree in behind me, and I'm effectively surrounded by acacia thorn trees. Apparently, that's a barrier for lions. At least it uh, buys me a little bit of time, just enough time for the lion to get a little bit more hungry. All right, something else I can do. Thick rope came from the hot air balloon. I was wondering when I was gonna get a chance to use it, and this would be the perfect place. I'm gonna loop the rope up to the tree there, Dangle it down into my shelter. That way, 
hopefully not, but if I do have to uh, make a quick escape up the tree, I've got a climbing rope to help me. Okay, here we go. I even put a couple of uh, loops in it. Which will give me a, either something to grab onto with my hand or step into. That's good. Any advantage I can have against a 750 pound lion, I'll take. Well, I'm getting closer. That plateau up there, there's a, a nice even way up to take me to where I have to rendezvous with the crew. But I am still, for now, stuck right in the middle of line territory. So I should talk quieter. Oh. A little muddy, but it's clean. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's lucky. I got myself a crab. Oh yeah, buddy, you are now nicknamed Dinner. And don't nip on anything when you're in there. There we go. I got myself a meal, however small it might be. This is a great spot for fresh water, just seeping out of the ground here. I know it's gonna be clean, but it's a horrible spot for snakes. I'm gonna make this quick. Oh yeah. Whew. Always surprises me to find nice clean water seeping out of the ground high up in the hills. I get asked a lot if I ever get sick from drinking water. No, the truth of it is, the bad water is around the cities and towns. 99% of the time out in the wilds, you know, you can dig a hole beside a, beside a, a, a warthog watering hole and let the, 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 the water seep through and it'll be clean and drinkable and uh, you're not filling yourself up full of parasites and diseases. Rehydrating, rehydrating yourself and living. So I don't worry too much about water. In, uh, in the remote wilderness areas. It's a lot better than it is around the cities. The potassium permanganate and glycerin are working great for getting any fire going easily. There we go, that's what I like to hear. A fire in lion territory is controversial. Some feel it keeps them away, but many others feel it actually attracts them since they're naturally curious. I'm gonna cook me up a crab dinner. Where are you going? Come back here, gotcha. Whew, this guy's fast. There we go. Into the fire he goes. This is gonna be good. Well, while I cook him, let me tell you a couple of things. First of all, it's clear to understand that this thorn bush that I have around my shelter is probably fairly inadequate. It should be thicker and higher. There's not much more thorn bush around here. Secondly, it's not a barrier. It's a deterrent, not a barrier. If the lion wants to get in here, he's coming in. Same thing goes for this fire. It might be a deterrent, but it's not a barrier. Okay. Uh -huh. I think he's cooked. Actually, when he's this small, he could probably just eat shell and all. But I will... Uh... Go for the legs. Hmm. A little sandy, but good. Mm, I never thought I'd be eating fresh crab while surviving in Africa. When you're this hungry, everything tastes good. I'm just eating the shell, my claws, everything. Settle for the night soon. Spend all night listening for lions. You can bet on that. A night in lion territory is not likely one where I'll see much sleep. I always feel like I'm hearing something. Morning can't come soon enough. Right, 
I made it through night in lion territory. And uh, I did get attacked by about seven or eight ticks through the night. Hungry little buggers. Well, I'm not out of danger yet. I've still got to get out of here and uh, head up to an area where, in truth, here it seems the danger was more at night. Where I'm going, the danger is more as I travel because it's uh, heavy buffalo and uh, elephant territory. And uh, all of them are pretty ornery, along with their little slithering friend, the black mamba, little being anywhere from six to 14 feet here. So I'm gonna get up, get on my way and see how I do making it through that territory. My little rocky knoll, I think for sure, for the night. I'm just gonna check it out for uh, snake dens, snake holes, and any other dangers. I've got a little spot here on the rocks, somewhat shaded, somewhat flat, with a really good view to the front so I can see what's going on around me. Up on the heights, I might be out of lion territory, but I'm not out of danger. Buffalo are feared more than lions in Africa for their intense aggressive behavior towards humans. Okay, I swear I just heard something growl over there. I'm gonna back away slowly. It seems that the only answer to just about everything in Africa is to back away slowly, whether it's a black mamba or a lion or a buffalo. If it's anything up here, it's gonna be a buffalo, and that's the last thing I wanna come across. I don't see anything. I have no idea what that grumble growl was, but that was close enough for me. Before setting up my camp, I better deal with this very obvious snake den. I'll tell you what, before I actually poke around in there with a the stick, I'll uh, throw a couple of rocks at it, see if that does anything. Nothing yet. I'll try poking. Okay, so I doubt there's anything in there. It's just an old hole. And hopefully nothing is coming back to its home later tonight. Normally a spot like this, I just Lay out on the rocks, but this is very active black mamba territory, so I'm just gonna get myself up off the ground. <laughs> now you might think that I could pretty much just grab any bug and eat it and get some protein. It's not true. This guy's a good case in point. Some of these bugs, at the very least, aren't palatable, but often they'll even have uh, toxic poison in them. This guy, well, he's got a couple things going against him. Number one, he's got brightly colored legs. So that's the first thing you want to look out for. Bright colors, be careful. Usually means something toxic. Number two, he's really cumbersome and just plodding along and just bumbling along right out in the open without issue. And when they do that, it means they probably got nothing to worry about. They're probably carrying some kind of a toxic poison with them. And number three, and I'm not even going to bother testing this one, is do they smell bad? And often they'll, they'll have a horrible little odor to them. So if, if they meet three of those or even just one of those three conditions, then uh, it's probably a good bug to stay away from. Okay, I'm going to do something that I should have done when I first started off survival. That's the piece I want. What are you doing 
that or that. Throwing stick is about as primitive of a, of a hunting implement as you can find. Pretty basic. Get into Australia, you know, they're boomerangs. Everywhere else, it's just usually some sort of a curve like this. It's good if you've got a bit of a ball on the end of the head there. A throwing stick is an advantage, but it's no guarantee. There's always a danger of losing track of my bearings and getting lost when I go out hunting, but I've only eaten a few ants, a crab, and some random wild edibles in four days, and I think it's worth it to take a chance at getting some food. Just some very small leopard tracks. Very young one. Well, I saw lots of guinea fowl when I didn't have a throwing stick in my hand. Much bigger leopard tracks now. Seen some small ones, but that's a good sized cat. It makes sense now to head back to camp while I still have a bit of daylight. It's a starry night, it's beautiful. I'm in extremely active black mamba territory, so my biggest concern is obviously snakes. I'm not too worried about leopards, they should leave me alone, especially with this fire going. Time to break camp and get going. I'll try to hunt for food all along the way. Okay, just over here there's some quail and guinea fowl. Just put my pack down. I haven't walked very far. We'll see if I can get a shot at them. I had this in, in the side of my pack. I didn't want to have it in my hands carrying it, but I guess I will. Ah! So that whole time I was just talking to you, there was one down here. I keep my spear and my, most importantly, my throwing stick handy this time. Foolishly, on the beginning of my trek, I had tied my throwing stick to my pack, so when I first saw the birds, it took me too long to pull out the weapon and get a good shot away. One simple wrong decision, and that can make the difference between survival or not. It's gotta keep guzzling water everywhere I find it. This is it. My last home. I had been planning to sleep under the stars tonight, but there's thunder rumbling and clouds pulling in. Boy, six days with hardly any food and uh, you can't stand up too quick. You get very lightheaded. And uh, I'm all wobbly and, and dizzy, but same token, I gotta go get some food. Mind you, it's come to this. I'm now chopping a termite mound to see if I can kill a little much. I can't even find the big juicy termites. I'm gonna pig out on the little termites. There we go, four at once. Mmm. Ooh, and the dirt's a bonus. Oh, I'm getting stuffed. I'll tell you the truth, I'd much rather set this tent up like a dome with some bent branches. It makes a much stronger shelter. But uh, it's no word of a lie to say uh, I just don't have the steam anymore. Oh, 
well, that's it. It's my last night in Africa. And uh, storms have passed, everything's calmed right down. My only real concern for tonight will be uh, scorpions. There's a lot of scorpion holes around here, so I'm gonna hope that nothing decides to come in and sleep with me tonight, and, uh, and snakes. But I should get through one more night. I'm actually not that far from an African nature reserve lodge now, but the deal was to meet my crew out on the plains. And believe me, the sight of that white truck gave me a great adrenaline rush. So for now, I head back to safety after a week on the African plains.